So hello and welcome So today we are going to have a look at the Galaxy 3070 And uh, we are going to unbox and see all of the features of the 3070 So in terms of benchmarking and um, things technical things like that You can see uh, Goldfire's excellent review I'll leave the link in the description down below So today we are going to unbox this card See its features and see if 3070 in general is a suitable card for you And should you consider it so first things first, uh, on, upon unboxing the card, you are greeted with a GPU bracket. Uh, this is also RGB control. Um, I'm very glad they, they, that they included included this. I don't see even more expensive cards coming with any accessory at, at all. So the fact that they're giving you a GPU bracket is actually a very value added uh, thing. So another thing included as usual is also the instruction manual which uh, we never read of course uh, So we're gonna put this aside for a while Okay this is another accessory that I really like uh, This is a cable uh, to connect the graphic card to your RGB header on the motherboard This is uh, this will make uh, syncing up your RGB much more easier as you don't have to use software And can directly pack from the motherboard this I think is the screw and also the bracket for the graphic card holder if I'm not mistaken So there are some screws here <laughs> And now this is another feature I haven't seen on other graphic card There's actually an added fan that you can attach on the back of the graphic card uh, Which presumably helps in cooling but from the reviews I've seen so far uh, Hardly do anything So this is the graphic card itself It's quite a heavy graphic card especially considering the price so this is the graphic card, it has a triple fan design uh, with a 2.5 uh, slot in thickness uh, It's actually a very hefty and solid graphic card But the things I don't like is that the cables are not is not covered And you can see literally the yellow and colourful cable, the ketchup and mustard cable behind it They should have covered it um, What else you got in the graphic card? It's actually quite long, it's around 317mm uh, if I'm not mistaken So it's a very long graphic card It also comes with only one uh, 8 pin power connector Which is I think sufficient for a graphic card that only draws 220 watts um, The backplate is also a nice design uh, It is metal which I really like compared to the plastic backplates uh, It also is very color neutral And I like that they have holes so that air can pass through from below the graphic card Through the heatsink and on upwards It's actually a bit similar from the founders edition uh, in terms of airflow uh, So overall I think the graphic card is actually quite handsome And keep in mind this graphic card only costs 2500 ringgit Malaysia so this is the connection uh, for the RGB You can connect uh, the graphic card directly to the RGB header on your motherboard to control the RGB um, And then on the other side, uh, there's also the header for the extra fan that I showed before If you want to attach So these are the two things Although I must say I am very disappointed that the header is actually the 12 volt RGB And not the 5 volt ARGB 3 pin so actually, it's not much use if your if your fans and motherboard is controlling uh, ARGB uh, products. So that's a bit disappointing. They should have gone with ARGB connection. So on the back is pretty standard. Um, not much to say here. It comes with one HDMI 2.0 ports and uh, three display ports lah. So this is a very standard setup. Very similar to other graphic card. Yeah, so uh, previously I mentioned about the RGB and ARGB issue So this is the example of the issue lah So basically, uh, my motherboard is controlling my fan which is ARGB Which is a 3 pin 5 volt connection uh, While the graphic card is actually only supporting the 12 volt 4 pin RGB So you can see the difference because RGB, normal RGB you can only change between one color and another color You can only like pass from green to blue it cannot like gradually, you can see my case fans, you can see it gradually mixes, you can has a, that, you know, that rainbow effect That one cannot be done if you are using like an, a, an RGB instead of an ARGB header So these are things to keep in mind, I mean it's not a deal breaker, at this price of 2500 ringgit, I'm surprised that you can get a triple fan, 2.5 slot, uh, RGB with 
many more accessories than more expensive cards so it's not like i'm criticizing i'm just explaining to you the slight limitations so you are aware before purchasing and overall honestly i actually like the look of the graphic card i think it's a very nice looking card it's also not much difference from any other 3070 but i won't go into too detail because i'm not really a benchmark guy you can see gold Fi's review i leave the link under in the description below Acoustic wise, it's also very good. The card is not very loud and it also keeps cool. It peaks at around 74 degrees and that is under continuous load, uh, running continuous benchmark. So I think it's very good. Okay, so now we have reached the end of the review. And here I would like to give my opinion on whether or not you should get the 3070. Okay, in my opinion, if you're from something like a GTX uh, 1080 and below or if you're from like uh, 2060 Super or 2060, sure, upgrading to a 3070 is actually a very substantial upgrade, especially if you're considering to play games at uh, 2K at more than at more than like 100 fps so you're aiming for something like a 100 hertz monitor or 144 hertz monitor and you're intending to play at 2k sure i think the 3070 is a very good upgrade considering the price however if you're from something like uh, 2070 super or 2080 super or even to, especially if you're from if you're on a 2080 ti Forget it, I think for the hassle it's not worth it, just maintain, skip this generation or go to the RTX 3080 or 6800 XT. However, the big question um, that's going to be in everyone's mind is why should I get the 3070 instead of buying the AMD 6800? So there are a few reasons why. Okay, so the first reason why you should get the 3070. Okay, number one for me is actually availability. I know both cards are actually quite difficult to get. But as of right now, and by right now, I think it's the 25th of November, I have yet to see anyone, not even one Malaysian, post, uh, I mean, their hands that they have um, gotten to purchase the 60 at 100. I know some reviewers have got their, their hands on it, but... Um, I think I haven't seen anyone who managed to purchase the graphic card. This is compared to the 3070. Yes, it's not as easy to get. But if you're patient and you're willing to like look around, wait for around one week, you should be get. And you're not picky on terms of uh, you know brand or what type of cards you want. You can actually get a, a 3070 very close to MSRP or even MSRP. So even then, uh, the prices should be around only five percent more. Uh, than the normal MSRP which is very decent considering the current shortage of supplies of uh, processor and graphic cards so the second reason why you want to get the 3070 instead of the 6800 is actually value yes when you look at performance and when I say performance I mean raw rasterization performance the 6800 is actually a hit by around 10 to 15 percent however you must remember that the 6800 is also more expensive at 80 dollars and that is msrp so uh yes uh, the performance is and you can see that in the cost per frame that is actually neck and neck so yes you are getting more more performance but you are actually paying for that extra performance and things are going to take a turn for the worse for the AMD graphic card once you consider ray tracing because the ray tracing performance uh, on the AMD cards is actually not, not very good and uh, I mean I can see in the comment section already bro I don't care about ray tracing yes uh, you don't care about ray tracing but we must take that into consideration and we must consider that maybe future implement implementation of ray tracing will be better and more and, and will be present in more games and you must remember there's a second trump card of the nvidia graphic card which is the dlss which uses the tensor core to upscale the graphic so this can actually dramatically boost your fps um, and uh, with uh, you can actually get more fps with almost the same uh, image quality and as far as i'm concerned right now uh, amd don't even have an alternative for that so um, overall you have to consider these two factors like it or not the third reason why you should get the NVIDIA graphic card is actually uh, features. So what do I mean by features? 
sometimes when we are buying a graphic card we get too bogged down on things like uh, you know this graphic card is like 10 fps more this graphic card is like 15 fps more but actually when gaming you don't really see the like 10 10 fps 15 fps more but what you can feel is sometimes the extra features that the graphic card offers so for example i do video editing both for my youtube channel and for my personal use so when you're video editing i think everybody can attest that CUDA cores are generally which is in nvidia graphic card is generally better uh, for usage for video encoding and video processing uh, so that one is one of the advantage so if you're video editing that is an you might consider nvidia graphic card uh, because of that reason okay so maybe you're a streamer so second reason is maybe you're a streamer and you know you do video recording you have you know streaming is very popular these days maybe for casual sometimes you do casual sometimes people do it seriously so nvidia encoder actually the nvenc encoder in the nvidia graphic card has no competition i mean the amd version just sucks and the nvidia is so much better so if you're planning on uh, streaming and uh, you know uh, recording your gameplay so the nvidia will provide a better experience so that you can get uh, a much better image quality without the performance penalty so that is another reason the another value added features that nvidia have that uh, another thing that they have right now is rtx voice you should just google rtx voice and you can see uh, the difference how much it improves in removing the background noise especially if you have a mechanical keyboard or you're like me you have a very noisy sound sometimes playing in the background so you can cancel it out using rtx voice and then there's also another feature like nvidia broadcast I mean, I won't go into the detail. I might do a video next time um, explaining about the details in all of these features for NVIDIA Graphic Card. So NVIDIA Broadcast is something that you guys might want to look into. It helps to like, you don't have to have a green screen, but it can give like a green screen effect um, uh, on your stream. So it removes the background. So that if you have a messy background, uh, you can just, you don't, you don't have to use a green screen. Lah. It will automatically uh, remove it. I mean, you guys can Google this one. Uh, I won't go into the details. Go and, go and uh, Google NVIDIA Broadcast. So what are the features that NVIDIA have? Um, other than that, we must consider, I mean, Shadow Play, come on. Shadow Play is much better than Relief. Uh, that uh, AMD version, which is the AMD version. I mean, I mean, if you think Relief is great, I mean, I've used it in my Vega graphic card. Uh, it's not very good uh what else um yeah relief and then the more stable drivers i mean amd um amd has really unstable drivers especially for the 5700 and 5600 series uh you know i followed one youtube channel i think it's the youtube channel is ancient gameplays or something like that where the youtube channel actually specialized in just updating like every time amd has a driver update they will update just just i mean the channel is basically dedicated just for amd drivers i mean there are other things of course but mainly i saw that channel because of uh, for the amd drivers issues lah. so these are the features that you might want to consider in purchasing the graphic card and not just the raw performance of the graphic card but now we reach the elephant in the room which is v vram so there's a big debate going on in the internet which is um, people say that um, the 16 GB on the 6800 is better compared to the 8 GB in the 37 uh, RTX 3070 and I do agree in terms of future proofing um, I think that 16 GB is definitely better than um, 8 GB of the 3070 however uh, we must remember a few factors um, number one is even at the current state not even at 4k not many games actually fully saturate the memory so one must also understand that memory allocation is not the same as memory usage so sometimes when you open a game and you see that i mean the game uses like 7 gb from your 8 gb graphic card it just means that it is allocated there but it doesn't mean that is the game is actually using the memory so that one is you must understand so there are some articles in the internet uh, that go goes into more details in regarding memory usage and memory allocation so you guys can google I'll, I'll try to find some links and post it down in the description below um, and then another thing is that in my opinion the graphic card is actually aimed at 2k 144 and not really 4k and when you're talking about 2k i think the 3 gb buffer eh, the 8 gb buffer is uh, i think will last you at least for three years i mean i i would bet my money that it will last for at least three years 
and by the time that you need an upgrade the issue will won't be just the vram the issue will be the gpu core itself is not fast enough uh, to provide the frame rate so at the end of the day you still need to upgrade the graphic card not because just the graphic card you don't have enough vram but because the gpu core itself is not fast enough so you must consider that factor so what i'm saying is that um if you're worried about um, buying the 3070 and having bottlenecks in the vram for the next three years if you're playing 2k i don't think you should be worried so much i think it's uh, definitely very safe and um i think having more vram is better but whether or not it is actually is going to provide any benefit in the future is actually anyone's guess um i mean that's just my opinion and you know i might <laughs> regret it and eat my words later but i do feel that i actually if you ask me i wish nvidia just put something like maybe 10 gb or 12 gb vram uh, but i guess 8 gb should be okay especially if you're playing at 2k I mean 2K right now, what games is actually saturating the VRAM 2K? I mean if you play extreme games like Microsoft Simulator, it's a different story but most games are not Microsoft Simulator. So, I think that 8 GB is actually enough. So anyway guys, if you find this video useful and helps you in your purchasing decision or help you in clarify any of your you know doubts about buying a 3070 or buying a 6800, um, do consider to leave a like and sub this channel. So far, um, I'm trying to get into the rhythm of uploading regularly at least once a week, um, at least once a week or once or two weeks and I'm trying to post just tech related content. So if you want to help this small Malaysian YouTuber out, do consider just leave a like and sub and leave a comment if you have any question down below, any opinions, really appreciate it. Anyway guys, see you guys next time.